about a month ago, I went on eBay and I bought a R9 380X. I know I could have probably gotten something a little bit better, but this was more of an experiment to see how well the R9 held up in 2020. Now for the around the same price, you probably could have gotten an RX 570. It depends really on the market and what's on eBay at the moment. If you wanted to get an RX 580 or 570, you could probably spend a little bit more money. So I installed it into an i5-2400 with 8GB of DDR3 RAM, a 128GB SSD from Team Group, and a 500GB Western Digital hard drive that I got on eBay as well. New for around $8. So it really does depend on the market and what's currently available. I mean, I also bought the case, I bought it new for $30. Of course, the power supply, I would always recommend you to buy a new power supply. Never really go used as you don't know what the power supply's been through. Maybe it's defective or it doesn't even work. And if you buy a power supply that doesn't work, it really is gonna mess up everything else. So make sure that you buy your power supply new. That's something that I do recommend. So let's get into the build. At the end of the video, I'll give you my conclusions and what I think about the build and if you have any suggestions for this build or maybe get a cheaper build but at more powerful than this please let me know in the comments down below as i would really like to know So we're gonna build it outside of the case just to make sure everything's working. First thing we wanna do, open up this. So you're gonna push down. So you'll notice there's a little gold triangle right there. That gold triangle is gonna line up with the triangle that's right. So you're just gonna lie it down. Don't put pressure down on it. Don't squeeze it down. Don't press down on it. And then right here, it'll feel like you're gonna crush something, but it'll be fine. Just push down. Now, next thing we want to do is apply some thermal paste. I'm just using this MX2. Just a little bit. We don't want too much on it. Usually I just put a dot. Next, we want to install... This is just an Intel stock cooler. So I just want to line it up with the screws. Make sure it's seated down. You can go side to side. I mean corner to corner, not side to side. This fan connector into the port. Let's move into the RAM now. So here you got your RAM sticks. These are two by four, so two four gigabyte sticks. I already tested this out. And for some reason, two ports do not work. So just make sure that your ports actually work. So all you have to do is line up this with that. So first you want to push these down so we can get that open. And then we're going to just slide this in. Make sure it clicks so you'd run dual channel. But right now, unfortunately, these two do not work. I have tested them out and they don't work. Just make sure that if you're going to buy anything used like this, make sure it does work. Make sure there's no problems with it. Here's our motherboard. We got the CPU installed. We have the fan CPU installed and we have two of our RAM sticks installed. The next thing we want to do is get that GPU installed in here. Uh, basically, it's this, it works the same way as the RAM sticks, okay? This slot right here is going to line up with the blue one, so the top one. You're going to want to put it in slot number one. Carefully move it forward just a little bit so it doesn't, so it's not on top of the RAM slots, the openings right there. If we don't move it forward, it'll open the RAM slots and the computer will not boot. So just make sure that you're putting it just a little bit to the side. Okay, so now we have everything installed. We have our CPU, our CPU cooler, two RAM sticks, and our GPU. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is hook up all these cables. Now, a lot of these cables might look intimidating, but basically they're pretty straightforward. Now, this is going to be a mess inside the case because this case has no cable management. Let's hook up everything in here just to test out that everything works. The graphics card, CPU, everything's fine. So here you're going to see it says, oh, basically it says motherboard on it. Alright. You'll see how it looks on your motherboard. It might look a little bit different than this, but if you're using this same motherboard, it'll look the same. It has like a little groove right there with this little clip right here. So all you're going to do is just slot it in there. Just push down. Our next cable that I'm going to make sure is plugged in is the CPU. It should just say CPU. It'll come with two. And over here, you'll see a four pin connector. 
you'll see this four pin connector. You just want to hook up the cable that says CPU. So this will give power to our CPU. And we just want to plug it in the same way as the other one. Make sure it's slotted down and we're good to go. The next cable you're gonna want to grab is this one. Your VGA, VGA cable. This VGA cable will give power to our GPU. It'll be the same process as everything else. You just slot these into the GPU. This GPU needs six pins to power. Like I said before, the GTX 760 usually needed eight, eight pins. So you would put these together form an 8 pin. On top of the graphics card, you're just going to see that it has 6 connectors. So you don't need these extra 2 I and mean, don't chop them off or anything. So basically the same thing as you did with your CPU and the motherboard. Just want to slot these in. Okay, so all these extra connectors, these are basically SATA power cables and this is Molex. So you will need this Molex for fans. These SATA cables will connect your hard drives, your SSDs, stuff like that. So let's hook up our SSD, our Team Group SSD that we're gonna install into this computer. It already has Windows 10 installed, so I'm not gonna be showing how to install Windows 10 in this video. If anybody does want a tutorial on that, I am more than happy to do it. So basically, your SSD comes with two connectors, SATA power cable and your SATA, so it'll transfer data. So this, that comes from your power supply, and you're going to be connecting that into here. Basically the same thing. See the connector? You want to connect it, you're good to go. Now this end, this end right, going to connect to the motherboard. You know what we should have done first? We should have connected this into the motherboard before the graphics card. Take the graphics card apart. It's a simple fix, nothing too complicated. And it'll just slot right in. As you can see, we have everything connected. We have our RAM that is connected. We have our CPU fan that is connected. We have our CPU power connected. Our motherboard is connected. And so is our GPU with our VGA cables connected. And our SSD is connected as well. Just make sure every single component is connected properly. These are some old components, so I don't know if they are fully functioning. But okay, shut down again. And we're basically in Windows now. So it looks like everything works. We have all of the components working. Now we're just gonna install it into this case. Very straightforward. You did most of the build outside of the case, so there won't be any problems. The only thing is you're gonna have to disconnect a couple cables from the power supply and take off the graphics card. But other than that, it's a pretty straightforward move into here. And now we just have the motherboard with the CPU and the RAM in it. This case is not Dell like the motherboard. It's not gonna have the correct pins. We won't be able to connect a lot of these. The ones that we can connect though are the power switch and two power LEDs. Those we can connect to this motherboard. I'll put up a chart exactly where they're supposed to go, but I'll try my best to show you exactly where they're supposed to go. You should see something that says power switch. It has five connectors. Two of those will work for our power basically. And then two of them for the power LEDs. Our switches. So the power switch is going to go into these two slots, the top two slots basically. I did break off a little part because it would not fit properly. So you might be, might have to do that. So the power LEDs also have to go in these two. So usually I put it on the one next to it, right here, the very last one. Don't break a pin either, so be very careful with these. In the case, you want to have your standoffs installed. Standoffs are basically just little screws that you want to install in each one of those holes. Slowly lower it down. Now this right here, where all your connectors are going to be, you have an IO shield in the back. It should be pre-installed if you're doing a pre-build, but if you're not, all you want to do is just put this in the back of your computer. You have a, a bunch of these little screws that you want to screw the motherboard in. It helps to have a magnetic tip on your screwdriver. If you don't have one, it'll make it a little bit more difficult, but Let's talk about these. Basically USB, we're gonna plug that into the USB on the motherboard. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but basically way down there, it says in INT USB. This is gonna go in there. So it's gonna have the pins just like that. 
So we want to install the power supply next. I don't, I don't know if we can cable manage anything. We might be able to cable manage just a little bit, but probably not a lot, you know? Right. Basically put in your power supply with this facing forward. We just want to screw these down. See all these cables? Yeah, it's gonna be a mess. We're gonna have to connect this the same way that we already connected them earlier onto the motherboard. I don't know how I'm gonna cable management this. So next up, our GPU. Same way you connected it earlier. Actually, before we connect the GPU, we need to connect my $10 SATA cable. And of course, connect it with VGA. We're not gonna get a super clean looking PC. We do have a 500 gigabyte S, I mean hard drive, that we will be mounting on here later. Just connect this. All right, so we got the fan splitter connector. And just connect that to your Molex. Okay, so cable management is gonna be a big issue in this case, for sure. Right, so now that we have everything installed properly, let's uh, connect our hard drives, or our drives and everything. So this is what we're gonna do. We're just gonna put the SSD right in there. So clearly this is not the best cable management. This is also not the best case to cable manage things in. So I did try to route some cables through the back and put it down like through here, like the motherboard and all that. But the problem with that is the lid will not close if I do that. I think this is pretty normal on PCs like this. Especially budget options like this that you don't know exactly how well things work. Every time we turn it back on, it turns back off. Three times, I think? And it restarts three times by itself, so that's the only problem with this PC. And we press F1 for the second time. Boot it into Windows. Alright, let's try it. I don't know if it'll actually read the hard drive this time still doesn't read it all right so let me try this i found that you should check mds your memory for some reason so let's restart now and check the problem so checking for memory problems uh hopefully that'll work so when this is finished we'll i'll come back and do it still doesn't read the hard drive let's just check the disk management Okay, it read it. New volume, select what happens. Perfect. So, this is the boring part. This is where I'm gonna install everything. So, I'll catch you when we got all of the games installed.
So as you see there on our tests, this computer does pretty well. If you haven't seen my laptop video, uh, it's getting up there with the laptop in terms of frame rate. Frame rate for almost all the games is pretty high. Fortnite, I mean, it's in the hundreds. The only game that I do feel it struggles a little bit with is Call of Duty, but so does my laptop. I mean, I can only get around 60 frames per second. So that one may be a little bit more about game optimization. Of course, with any PC build that's around this budget, there's always going to be a little bit of problems. Uh, with this one, as soon as I turn it on, it reboots once twice and then three times again so i don't know if that's something normal I, I think it's because the motherboard isn't in its proper case and the reset switch isn't plugged in i think that makes the computer think that there's nothing there so it restarts because it, it turns on and then it resets and then it turns on again and then it resets but hopefully that doesn't discourage you from trying this out on your pc build I'm pretty sure a lot of you probably have an old desktop lying around that not nobody's using and you want to use it as a gaming PC. So for this PC, the only upgradability path that you can really take is, you know, you can upgrade the graphics card, you can upgrade the RAM, but once you want to upgrade the CPU, it's going to be a little bit harder because you'll probably have to upgrade the CPU and the motherboard because the i5-2400, the only other CPU that you can really upgrade to is the i7-2600 but after that you're basically limited and you can't really make this a better pc it's kind of the same with what i talked about with the laptop the laptop is very difficult to upgrade you'd have to sell your whole laptop to upgrade into something better and new don't let that discourage you trying out a gpu for your current system so i hope you did enjoy the video if you did like it hit a thumbs up if you didn't like it hit a thumbs down you can also subscribe because i'm gonna be showing you how to repaint this case i have some other video ideas that i really want to do and i really want to show you guys how to do them and hopefully you can learn something from it so if you do have any other questions concerns let me know down below and i will catch you in the next video